Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thank you very much for joining me. It's so lovely to have your company again. Today, I thought we'd make this um, little design. And what I tend to do when I'm coming up with a design is I look for stamps I possibly haven't used for a while. And I found Samuel, this lovely snail. And I thought, how can I incorporate him? So the design just sort of unfolded after that. And I wanted something to hang these gorgeous fairy charms from. So I went for some florals for a change. I think that's our fairy bonnets. And I've also used some mica minerals again. Just because, as I say, I've had so many questions of crafters asking how to incorporate them. It's one of those products that we, we seem to buy products sometimes, don't we? And we just put them on the side and forget to use them. So we're going to use that to add a little bit of shine and a little bit of shimmer to our slug trail or snail trail. So I'm going to start off, as usual, I've used a six by six ready-made card blank. And what I've got is I've got a piece of card which is five inches square. And I've already cut myself my toppers. Look, I've gone for a piece of white card behind and a piece of silver card. And I've already added my black Sharpie line around these because obviously you can add them on your mats and layers if you want. And then it just carries on that lovely black edge, that foam matting and layering. And again, that helps with, with weight if you're thinking if we added black card, we'd have extra layers there, wouldn't we? So I've got those ready and I'll put those to one side and we'll begin. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our stamping first. Me being me, I tend to like to do that. And as I say, I'm going to use, I'm sure this one's Samuel. We've got Samuel in Sydney and I think this one's Samuel. And I'm going to use my black Versafine Claire. I can get the lid off. So we'll just ink him up. And again, lots of light tapping. And me being me, I've just cut a little bit around the edge. So I'm just going to wipe that with a, a cloth. I've got him on my little Lavinia block and I'm going to place him, we'll go for about there, I think. And again, we'll give him a nice press. Just give time for the ink. I know we always say it, but it's important. Give time for that ink to soak in to the card. There's a lot and lot of detail in Tracy stamps. They're exquisitely drawn. So it is worth just giving time for that ink to soak in for every little bit of you. Don't want to miss any of that detail. There we go. How beautiful is that? He does stamp so well. And what we're going to do is we're going to add Pippin. I've realised how many designs I use Pippin on. <laughs> He honestly doesn't go off my desk and I'm just going to sit him in my head. He's reaching. He wants one of these little hearts that's dangling, the chocolate hearts in my head and they're dangling down from the flowers and he wants one. So I'm just going to put my head over just so I can sit Pippin on the back. And our Samuel's come in and offered him a lift. He said, climb on my back and I'm sure you can reach those chocolate hearts. So again, Pippin's a silhouette. So again, give time for that ink to soak in. And there we go. He's just planted beautifully. If you got a bit of a gap and you'd not quite planted him well, um, just use your black Sharpie or your, your black fine liner and add a little bit. But we're okay. We're lucky. But we're okay with that. And then I'm going to come in with my fairy bonnet. Beautiful set this. There's two stamps. And I have to say, one of my favourites, these. Mind you, I say that about all of them. Are you the same? And for me, I'm just going to turn my design to the side. And I'm going to stamp this three times. And I'm going to be mindful. I mean, again, remember, you can use your acetate to think. If I stamp it here, then I can dangle the fairy charm from it so use your acetate to help with your placement so I'm thinking I'm going to go for an angle like that 
Now there are two different sizes you can mix and match. I'm actually going to do all three with the same, the same one, but you can mix and match. I'm just going to alter the angle. Just again, because it's nature, isn't it? And it will look more natural if they're just hanging. And let's see the third one. Again, if you're not sure, bring your acetate back in. No, it doesn't look right that way, does it? We'll go for there. And again, I've got my copy of paper underneath. So I like that sort of that sort of setup. Now what we'll do is we'll just get my fairy charms. Now again, there's three here. So I'm going for this one, almost the plain sort of heart. And again, I'm just getting an idea. Now it's quite long this. So I'm just going to grab myself a piece of my copy of paper. And I'm thinking it'll look nice. So it looks like he's looking up if it hangs from this one. So if I put my copy of paper there and I'm doing it before I ink up because I'm the sort of person within two minutes, I forget what I'm doing and I'm liable to just stamp the whole thing. Now you could wipe this off, but just because I'm not sure exactly how far I'm thinking, I'm just going to use my copy of paper there. And then when I turn that round, there we go, it's nicely hanging. So again, I've got choices. I'm thinking one would look nice hanging there. And I don't want to overcook this. I don't want too many. So we love threes, don't we? Odd numbers, magic numbers. And again, I've just overcooked it with my, with my ink. I am a messy crafter, you know. But I'm thinking this one can hang nicely from that fairy bonnet. Now we want a third one, don't we? So there would be too close. I'm wondering if I get, do you think I could have one? Let me have a look. Now I like it in this corner. I'm going to go for, and again, I do spend quite a while just looking at things and using the acetate and deciding exactly where. And as I say, I don't want to overcook it with this. I don't want too many. So I'm thinking just have one in that corner. And I like that design. I think if I just look, I think I'm, I'm happy with that. So what we can do is I'm just going to turn that over and blot it again try and get in the habit of blotting your work it's just you've got less chance of smudging it because your versifying clairs are a slower drying ink and obviously i'm doing my stamping first and just because i like belt and braces I'm just going to put my heat tool just because i'd hate to um start adding ink in the background and, and just smudge what i've already made so we'll use that as well. Now for me, the reason I've done my stamping first is that now I can get on and do the landscape behind. And I'm not going to mask any of this. I found because I'm going to use my Lavinia brushes, I can almost brush around the images. And for me, I mean, we're all different, but for me, that's the way I tend to work. And I'm going to come in with the landscape masks and use the flatter one, the one that in my head is number one. And again, for me, I just turn the work on the side and I'm thinking, let's have some shade. Our first one, our deepest one, let's put under our snail. So got my brush that I use for my green. I don't have a brush for a specific actual colour, but I have for a colour family. So this is the one I use on my green inks. And then I'm just gonna put some ink on my mat just because I always find it easier. These are so juicy, the Elements Ink Pads, and this one's olive. So we'll take some off, and I'm gonna come, let's just move my, I think that'll be a good angle. 
and I'm going to come on the mask first and this as I say I want it quite deep quite deep at the front and we'll go lighter so we can afford to add quite a bit of bit of colour and again I'm bringing in from the sides and I always like my corners deeper so we'll have it quite deep on this these corners and we've grounded him really well so let's have another one say here and again I'm just going to angle alter this I don't want the same shape to be exactly so as long as I've got a different shape and we'll have a bit of angle so I'm going to start on the mask and just flick and I'm going to come towards my snail same this side and I want it deeper at the edge so I'm getting some on the edge and I almost leave a little bit of white around and it's so quick and easy to do this and then we'll have another one let's say there I think there would be a nice so again I'm coming in on the edge and I'm not adding any more ink because I want this lighter I know I say this every time but it does help with perspective so deeper on my edges and again I've just got that lovely landscape with almost a little bit of a halo around so what I'll do now is put the lid on my green and I'm just going to mop this up because for me, I just want a nice, clean working space. And I'm going to go in with my blue ink now and I don't want to contaminate it. So if I just clean it up and I'm going to bring in my blue, so that's the blue lagoon. And I've got my blue stencil brush. And what we'll do is we'll bring in the, the moon mask, our circle masks. And again, I'm going to go for the smaller one. And I'm going to think, where can I put it? And I can just get it in there. Look, now again, for me, I'm sorry. I know I always turn it on the side, but it's just, I find it easy to work that way. Now, I don't want to get Pippin's head, but I do want that heart in it. So I'm thinking there, it'd look nice. And again, do spend your time deciding. I mean, you could have it over here, but I just think it would hi almost highlight, make a focal point of the, the little chocolate heart a bit more. So again, into the blue and onto my mat. And I want to take quite a bit off on my mat because I know this blue is a very strong colour. And again, I'm dabbing it on my mask first and just gentle flicks, very gently, gently. And it doesn't matter that I'm going over my fairy bonnet. I don't need to worry about that. And again, if you need to move, probably not easy to watch I'm sorry but I do need to just move my hand just to and I'm almost going in between the flowers and when I take the mask away if I bring that round so you need to check you can see I think it's lovely because it's really highlighted and I'm almost leaving a little gap between where my landscape is and then what I need to do be mindful remember we have our piece of kitchen roll and I'm just going to come in and flick a little bit of colour round the edge and almost in between my florals. Now I've not added any more ink on my brush, but what I want to do is just have a look and for me, I just want a little bit more on the corners, on that edge. So just pick a little bit up off my mat and on both corners and down this edge. And I'm happy with that. I really like the way that's looking. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ink up and I'm going to paint my fairy bonnets. But I want a little bit of blue, my flicks. So first of all, I'm just going to get my paintbrush and pick a little bit of this colour up and I'm just going to add. Now again, I know not everybody likes these little flicks. Um, so again, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to add them, you don't have to add them. And I'm just going to add a few round there. I had a little slight black smudge there. And if I had a few of those, nobody will ever see that little black smudge. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to paint my fairy bonnet. And I'm going to use this blue ink I've got here. But what I am going to add to it 
is I've got some of my mica minerals and this one is the silver pearl so I'm going to get my little you know all about my little applicator had to go and have another coffee at one of those shops you know just so I could uh, get another little uh, applicator it's a good excuse isn't it so I can go and have my coffee now that's probably far too much in fact um a bit back in there and I always would recommend put your lid on straight away because you don't want to knock this over but I mean look how long these last for so long and then what we're going to do is mix a little bit of our ink look and then add some of our powder and what it'll do it'll just give if I just stand up and look can you see or you can see the mat can't you so it's mixing the ink but it's just giving it that lovely shimmer and again, if I want some more, and I can vary the intensity of the colour of the ink depending on how much shimmer I put in. And it depends how much water I add. You can have great fun with this. So what I'll do now, and I'll do this quite quickly, because again, you don't want to spend time watching me paint. But I'm just going to add this lovely shimmery and I can add a bit of deeper blue if I want. Look, I can mix. I've got some here. And then I can go in with the shimmer. And this way you could add your shimmer to any colour. So we'll just... And these are a lovely, lovely shape to paint. Now... Obviously, as I say, I'm going to do it quite um, quickly. But at home, I would really take my time and enjoy, really enjoy the process and enjoy painting these. I do find that the painting is so relaxing. I mean, I've got to be honest, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of crafters colour in to relax. And I get that, I totally get that. But for some reason, for me... I just love this, um, my almost pretend watercolour painting. And again, it's whatever. If you've got um, a different way that you like to colour these in, by all means, you do that. You know what I always say? It's you do how whatever you're comfortable with because we're all different. And that's why it's lovely to have videos on here and so many YouTubes that you can go and see because we all do things a different way and you can pick up hints and tips from all the design team, which is so lovely. And it is lovely that we do things a, a different way. Now, I've just got a couple more here. And again, I'm thinking if you hadn't thought of Christmas, the add in your mica minerals, if you're going to be making some Christmas cards, might just add a little bit of almost oomph to that. And what I will do as well is there's almost some little dots on this chain. So I'm just going to add. Now, you probably can't pick them up, but honestly, in the flesh, if you see this, it just adds a little bit. If I just try and bring it a bit closer, I don't, can you pick that up? Have I managed? And it just adds that little bit of something. So I'm going to use the same thing for the, the, the snail shell because I think that would almost be a bit, it's a magical snail, isn't it? So we're going to want a bit of, bit of sparkle on his on his shell look and the beauty of this is we'll still see the beautiful detail that Trace is drawn we're not going to lose that because snails get a bad press sometimes don't they so I mean this one's okay because he, he's not near my hostas so if he was near my hostas, I wouldn't think he was so lovely. But he's safe, this one. No hostas in sight. Now, I'm actually just going to add a little bit. And I want a bit more of this. Just in my snail trail here. Oops. 
there we go and what I'm thinking is just for his body I'm going to bring in a little bit of my graphite so I'm just going to pop a little only a tiny bit there look on my craft mat and just bring in and this is quite a deep colour and as I say I don't want it quite so dark so I'll just add a little bit of my mica minerals to that as well and let's just see what sort of colour that gives us for his body and as I say it's nice because it won't obliterate we'll still get all his detail but there we go I think he's a, a lovely sort of now I'm just going to add a little bit of almost depth around here just round where we've got the dark just to reinforce those darker areas and then what I'll do is I'll just clean this up now again for me with this design I'd probably make a couple of these because there was enough on my mat there to paint another couple and then that way you could paint two or three at once but obviously for these purposes I'll just clean it up because you don't want to see me painting two or three at the same time do you although I have to say if you sat there with a nice little drink or something and you're relaxing or maybe you're having a go with me maybe you're crafting alongside with me now that would be lovely wouldn't it we'll do our sharpie line around the edge now now normally I would do this at the beginning but with this video I wanted to show you how to just bring the colour in with the ink with our brushes and I thought it was easier without the line being there so again I'm just going to use my copy of paper and press down and the important thing is to press down and I tend to hold my hand quite near the edge and then that way your pen won't come across your work and then the last one and as I say that'll just nicely frame the whole design now for me at this stage when I was creating this I thought it just looks a little bit empty here so I looked at my floral stamps and I have to say the new silhouette foliage is definitely again becoming one of my favorites I like the large one and I love this one so again, I'm thinking we'll just add a couple and we'll use the black. Again, that'll balance it. It'll bring a bit of depth. Just help to frame the work. So I'm thinking one here. And then maybe a couple at this side. Let's have a look. Yes, we definitely need something there, don't we? And this is the perfect size. So if we bring that one in so we can see the grass at the bottom. Now to me at the minute that looks too symmetrical. So that's why I'm going to come in just with the edge. I think it'll look more natural. See for me I don't, I think it looks wrong. But if we just angle and bring that in and then what we will do is we'll just angle a little there and then I've got that nice cluster I still need just the odd little couple of second and third generation there I think on this one I notice I've, I've stamped my snail a little bit higher so I just need a little bit more something along the ground. So just, yeah, that's better. I like that. It just looked, it, there was too much of a space there for me. Oh, look at that. Off my ink pad. Just give my hands a wipe. Otherwise, you know what will happen? We'll end up with black dots, won't we? 
we'll have those black marks and we'll be looking for that emergency butterfly so just give it a quick wipe on my inky binky now you could leave the design like that and it's more or less finished but just a couple of little finishing touches and for that we're going to bring in our white gel pen and then a couple of our chalk pastel pencils now you know for me i just like using my chalk pastel pencil on my silhouette so on my rabbit for me um i just find it easier to highlight I'm just going to add his tail. I want to give him a bit of shape, so I'm going to highlight where that hind leg would be. A bit of highlight on his ears, tiny bit on his nose, and then just that where he's got that nice bit of fluff on his chest. And I'm just going to dab, buff it off. There we go. And for me, that just gives Pippin a bit more character. And then I'm going to use my white gel pen and just add a little bit of highlight on my heart. And then a little bit on our snail there. And I'm going to use my short pastel pencil just to add a little bit on the flowers. Not a lot, just a little, and not on every one. I don't want it too uniform, just to catch. And then just with my black, just going to add a little bit of shading, not much under the snail because obviously I've got his snail trail. <laughs> so I just want a little bit of shading and under here and what you'll see, I'm hoping that it will show up. It just adds that more depth and just going back in here and bringing out that depth to the design. And again, I'm just giving that a bit of a smudge to set it. And it's these little touches for me that make all the difference. And if I just bring in the original one, like I say, really, it's quite a, a quick design, but I think such an enjoyable one. And there's my mats and layers. So, I mean, you could leave it with Outlook if you wanted, but the fact that I've put my Sharpie around them, will pop them on. There we go. So there's the original. So I'm hoping you enjoyed that. And I'm hoping it just gives you an extra idea of what to do with your Mica Minerals. So Pippin's off. Hopefully he's going to capture this lovely chocolate heart and then he's going to go away and eat it. And I'm hoping he's going to share it with Samuel because that's what friends do, isn't it? They share things. So thank you for joining me today. And um, I'll see you again in a couple of days. You all take care. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.